G'day Smoke and Dagger fans, we've got a steak experiment for you today. So I heard the other day at work, someone cooked a frozen steak hot and fast and it produced a great crust. I couldn't believe it. So today, we're going to cook a frozen steak. We're going to freeze a steak, thaw it out, check how that cooks, and then we're just going to cook a regular steak. We're going to compare all three, we'll see what's the best. So follow along and check it out. All right, so fast forward. We have our frozen steak, clearly with icicles still on it. We have our steak that was frozen and has been thawing out for approximately five hours. And we have our regular steak. You'll notice here, dark maroon color. And these two, more traditional kind of red color. It'd be really interesting to see if the salt permeates the frozen steak. My initial guess is it's just gonna come off during the cook. Let's get salty. All right, folks, we have our Weber kettle sitting at approximately 240 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get these bad boys on. So taking a look at these steaks, first of all the frozen one, it looks like it's starting to defrost and the water is melting or dissipating the salt on top. And if we come across to the normal steak, you can see even though it's been a few minutes, the salt's starting to absorb. Is that going to play a key difference? Let's find out. First, the frozen steak, the thawed steak, and the normal steak. Sizzle, sizzle. Alright, it's been about a minute. Let's give them a first flip. Frozen steak. Notably harder to turn. So this is the frozen one. As you can see, it's lingering a little bit behind. Hasn't hit 50 degrees Celsius yet. All right, so we've just taken these beauties off and we're gonna let them rest for a few minutes. Just from a quick look before I do a blind taste test, they all look pretty similar in terms of the cook. None of them are A plus cooks, none of them have fabulous grill or sear marks, but overall, fairly consistent. I'm interested to see if there's any taste difference. Alright, so we've sliced a few of these up. On my left, we have the frozen. On my right, we have the normal. Something that's immediately apparent, even though I didn't intend it that way, they're all cooked slightly different. So the frozen, I'd say that's borderline rare. And as we move up to the normal steak, that's medium rare. Much more cooked either side. Look, none of them are overdone and none of them are blue. But it's good to note, the temperature of your steak actually makes a difference in how it's cooked. Other points to note, they all look juicy. None of them stands out over the other. All of them have nice fat rendering and all of them have an okay crust. I'm pretty excited to taste these. Let's get a blindfold on. All right, first blind test. Let's see. Oh yeah, you can tell that was cooked over charcoal. Fairly tender, nothing too special. Good flavor. I'm not disappointed with that. All right, blind test number two. Let's check it out. Okay, juicier, interesting. Juicier, maybe fractionally less tender. But still, great taste. Let's get on to the third. All right, last but not least, let's give it a crack. All right, this is the chewiest. Really good salt flavor there. Probably the strongest of the salt flavor. If I had to guess, I just had the normal steak, the one before it, so the middle steak, number two, that was the frozen steak, and number one was the thawed steak. How did I go? 
Alright, so I've had a chance to take my blindfold off, have a few more pieces of steak. And the number one lesson I've learned here is it actually doesn't matter if your steak's frozen or if it's been sitting on the cupboard for an hour. What really matters is how you cook it. The frozen steak today, I cooked the least and I enjoyed it the most. The steak that I had out the longest, I overcooked and it was a little bit chewy. So make sure you cook your steaks right. Other points of note, I think the frozen steak lost a little bit of salt, possibly when it was starting to thaw out and the water coming to the surface and pushing the salt off. Interestingly enough, the thawed steak actually had the saltiest flavor, but maybe I oversalted it when I was salting it. So I need to do this a little bit more controlled next time. If you have any thoughts on this video, or you'd like to see us modify the experiment, comment down below. Until next time, happy staking.